so, I mean, particularly conservatives, but people generally, and I, even on the chat here, I've got people saying, but the founders were, you know, we talked about, we've talked about reason and logic and deriving things from nature and everything. Where does the founders' religiosity play into, in terms of their thinking and in terms of, uh, how much of, of their religion is in the declaration, if any? Okay, so let's start with this fact. Approximately 98% of all Americans in 1776 were practicing Christians, yep. right? That's, that's a fact. But that fact does not directly bear on the arguments that were used by American revolutionaries during their conflict with British imperial officials. So if you read the major pamphlets, and not just the major pamphlets, the minor pamphlets and newspaper articles of ordinary everyday Americans between 1765 and 1776, what you see are Americans making political and constitutional arguments uh, against the sugar stamp, declaratory towns and tea, coercive acts, um, and then to the extent that they ground their arguments in moral principles, all of them, 100% of them, argued that, that, that they had certain rights and laws of nature. Every single American revolutionary argues from the position of the laws and rights of nature. So in other words, nature was the standard for 100% of all American revolutionaries. Now, it is also the fact that a relatively large percentage of those revolutionaries also believe that the source of those rights was the creator, was God, right? But there's a sense in which that doesn't really matter. All American revolutionaries grounded it in nature and the ultimate source of nature's laws is a secondary at best. It's, in fact, it's really an irrelevant concern. It was a, an irrelevant concern for American revolutionaries in their battle with British imperial officials. So the, the arguments that they are making, um, which were new arguments and were much, much more reflective of the Enlightenment and even of the secular Enlightenment than they were of the Bible, right? So for those for those people who think that America had a Christian founding, I'd like you to show me the documents. The, in other words, I want the evidence, right? I've provided a 400 plus, almost a 500 page book with hundreds and hundreds, thousands of quotations and footnotes demonstrating, I think, conclusively that the primary intellectual influences on American revolutionaries were those of uh, the Enlightenment and of John Locke in particular. Now, I would challenge anybody who argues that it was a Christian founding to show me where in their arguments against British imperial officials, they were making arguments from the New Testament yeah. against the Stamp Act, right? Now, they did. I mean, there were pastors, there were, there were ministers and priests um, who who gave sermons during uh, the period of the American Revolution, and that those sermons you know, were full of biblical illusions and biblical arguments. But what's interesting is that even these pastors, were, their ultimate arguments were Lockean arguments, and explicitly Lockean arguments, quoting Locke chapter and verse. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, somebody's asking, or a number of people asking, how many of these, how many of the founders do you think were, were deists? Um, you know, believed in a kind of a God that set things in motion, basically left man alone. Yeah, that, that's a hard question because it depends what you mean by, you know, founding fathers, right? So if you're, if you're talking about the most, um, the most elite of America's founding fathers, the Adamses, Jeffersons, Madisons, Hamil Hamiltons, et cetera, et cetera. I'd say, you know, it was a relatively higher percentage. You know, I would say to one degree or another. I mean, they all partook of a certain amount of deism. I'd say Jefferson more than most, uh, or 
some people like Ethan Allen, um, Tom Payne, uh, I think we're, we're much more in the deist camp, but even somebody like John Adams who attended church every, every Sunday, Adams comes, I have to say pretty darn close himself to being a deist. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourunbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show. And, um, and and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to keep this uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next.